This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hey, aloha, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. This is your next episode of Security Matters Hawaii, and today we have a guy who's been traveling the country sharing some great information. James DeMeo is with us. Uh, he's the author of What's Your Plan? And we're going to talk about planning, emergency response. We're going to get into what it takes to help protect your family uh, and be a little safer out there in the community. James, thank you so much for joining us. I know you're a busy guy. Andrew, thank you for the opportunity. Great. So we're going to, um, I tell you what, first of all, um, since um, I don't have you in the studio, why don't you give our audience a little bit, uh, by, just a little bit of your background. I read it myself, but uh, let, give a little bit of your history. Absolutely. Andrew, thank you for the opportunity to connect. Uh, James A. DeMeo, 28 years in the security industry, 21 of which I was with the Nassau County Police Department on Long Island, New York. I uh, went for a master's degree at Adelphi University, and uh, for the last seven years I've been kind of running in the event security lane. And over the last year or so, I've been focusing on family safety and preparedness. Yeah, and the, the title of your book, What's Your Plan? I, I was really happy to see that it was family focused because this is um, an area, you know, a lot of us that I think are in the security industry oftentimes take many of these things for granted. And if you're, if you're in the industry, you tend to be around people in the industry who take this stuff for granted. But the average guy out on the street maybe never gives a thought to what they can do to protect their family. So I, I love the focus of the book, and we're definitely going to get into that. Um, I always try to get pull a little something out of my guests first. Um, uh, I know you're I know you're busy with your schedule and all those things, but if from a security perspective, you know, if you look at the country and look what's going on, um, when you can't sleep at night, what does keep you awake? Well, certainly, uh, you know, we are definitely a politically polarized nation. Mm, so obviously, we scary. have a lot of different. Uh, uh, interesting and controversial topics from, you know, gun control and mental health. and But certainly, you know, challenges continue for all of us uh, entrusted with duty of care as security leaders. So certainly on a day-in and day-out basis, what keeps me up is just the ability to make that connection to kind of uh, ease those fears out there in society by educating the public on knowing what to do in times of crisis. Wow. That's a, it's such a good point. I was in a session with uh, Professor Tom DeLong from Harvard this past week or last week, and he, um, his whole session, he spent four hours with us to drill down to getting vulnerable and connecting with other. And, you know, I think maybe there's a lot of that missing. You know, we happen to be that, that first person who may see when a friend of ours or a family member is really starting to struggle. And it's, gonna, it's really going to be incumbent upon us to reach out to them, maybe have a difficult conversation. Maybe it's a, 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 a long conversation. It doesn't end quickly, but uh, to try to to try to get them to recognize that they're struggling and get some help before things escalate. You know, absolutely, and certainly have, having those types of conversations and being out front, you know, places us in a position of strength to best deal with the challenges. So certainly an awareness, uh, certainly sharing information, and having a vested interest in your own personal safety and security is part and parcel to being in the best position possible. Yeah. So did, um, tell me, what was the, what was in the, uh, for those of, those of you who haven't read it, I know, I know what started it, but what's the what got you really prompted to go ahead and write? Um, you know, obviously you'd been in the industry, you were working in event security. Um, was what what got the book started? I guess is the the, the what put pen to paper. <laughs> pen to paper. It's a great question, and for me, it was more of a, a personal matter where we were out at the mall and kind of walking around, and I was with my family up on the second floor in a suburban mall in, in Durham, North Carolina, and all of a sudden the lights went out. Wow. And uh, we kind of looked around and everybody was just kind of, you know, desensitized to the world around them. They were looking down at their phones and they were tweeting and texting. And, you know, uh, some, my son Aiden, who's 14 now, at the time he was 13, he said something to me as a dad that really just kind of, I was really awestruck by, you know, certainly his, uh, his awareness to the world around him. And, you know, from that moment forth, we, we exited the mall and, you know, on the way home, we started to talk about what we would do if something unthinkable, unimaginable would happen in that kind of a space. And, Andrew, that really was the impetus for me, again, entrenched in the industry for over 28 years. But when it comes from your own family, you take a look at and you say to yourself, what can I do really, you know, to share this information, educate my family, place this in the best position possible and go out and, and share that information with moms and dads around the country to place them in the absolute best position possible to keep themselves safe and sound. 
Yeah, and we we um, we're, we're talking about this a little bit before the show. You know, I I've often wondered what there's a there seems to be a I'm not sure the word I'm looking for, but it seems that people don't want to talk about security like seriously. It seems to be one of those sort of off color topics or it's got some negativity around it or or perhaps it's just fear you know of of the sort of the unknown um what's your your sense of that as you talk to people do they go wow this is a good idea i've never done it or, or do you do you do you get the sense as you talk to people that that um you know there are some people doing it but we're just not we're not proactive enough as a, as a community or as a country a great question. There's many different points of view, and obviously, as I mentioned earlier, we we're certainly uh, polarized, but I guess it really just depends where the person is in terms of their own personal experiences. Mm. Uh, on a personal note, uh, you know, my wife's uh, very good friend was in the audience, uh, you know, at the uh, Las Vegas shooting. Oh, she has wow. my book, and she's been struggling, um, and she can't really get past chapter one. So it really just depends where you are. You know, we saw out in Thousand Oaks, obviously, some of the folks that were in Mandalay Bay were also, you know, inside that venue. So it's really just a tragedy that for some people, the second time being, you know, uh, being involved in that kind of scenario. So it's your question it really just depends where you are and what kind of experiences you've had in your life. And I think uh, certainly there's a great deal of fear out there, but through education and knowledge, we can empower people on being more proactive. And, and I've talked about this quite Quite honestly and quite candidly, some of my best friends I'll meet tomorrow, you know, at ISC East, the FBI agents, very, very smart people, and they talk about motive. And certainly motive is, is important in understanding why people do heinous crimes, but why can't we just change the conversation and get out in front, have the awareness, do what we can do, again, to place ourselves in that great position before law enforcement, uh, law enforcement responds to the scene, because I spent 21 years in law enforcement. I know firsthand it can be frustrating. You do the very best you can with the resources you have. But as we've seen, Andrew, time and time again, over the last year since I wrote the book, most of the bad stuff is over before the good guys get there. So what can families do in terms of their own situational awareness? Again, not to be fearful, but to be empowered, to have that conversation, to get out in front of the challenges, and again, to place themselves in that position to, uh, to face the unthinkable, the unimaginable. And you brought back the, um, you know, the response time. And I had um, David Sellers on here. He's former Seattle PD, did a lot of work with uh, uh, warm teams, you know, getting uh, fire and EMS type first responders into a scene where it's still warm. And I'm not sure if all the public understands that when law enforcement shows up, they need to, to stop the problem first. And they're, the, the casualties are folks that, are, that need help. That's not really their first job. A lot of people don't know that. Did you... Um, have a, or do you find that people, the awareness of what's supposed to happen at a site when, when re responders do finally arrive, is there much awareness out there from, um, from your experience? Well, certainly, you know, DHS, run, hide, fight, see something, mm -hmm. say something. Those are all very good educational tools that we can share with the public. But I, I still think that people don't really want to think that the unimaginable is happening. We look at Jason Aldean. He was up on the stage. He thought it was something related to the speakers. You know, we look at, at certain things in, in Europe where there is cause for celebration. They think it's fireworks when, in fact, it's actually gunshots. Mm -hmm. So we, we've got to change, you know, our awareness, again, not to be fearful, but to say maybe, in fact, this really is something bad that's happening. But, again, we're out in front because we've already had this discussion before we walked into that space mm -hmm. on what we're going to do if we're faced with that kind of crisis. So, again, it's, it's an educational component. It's getting – it's certainly not from a fear-based you know, perspective, but it's just getting out in front. I always talk about leading from the front and leading without fear. And certainly fear is not, it's not an option. It's not part of the equation. So we, you know, we empower ourselves, we educate ourselves, we assist law enforcement by being an educated, you know, uh, safe citizen because we're out in front of the challenges. Yeah, and, and I think in those incidents, probably prepared citizens who know where the exits are because they took time to look could be a part of the solution for others who weren't very prepared, you know, to help get them out. I uh, did get a briefing at Infraguard earlier this year on the, the on the Mandalay Bay event, and you know, the just the exiting of that volume of people was was problematic. And there were those who were spent a lot of time just helping people get out of the site because they knew what to do, whereas you know many others did not. Um, so that's there's a, the education component is huge, and I'm. I'm, I'm wondering, you know, we, we definitely going to push the book. I mean, it's like three bucks on Kindle. You got to get this book. We'll, we'll get into that in our second, our second half for sure. But the, um, the, the education, it, 
it isn't done at, at like lower levels. You know, this book's um, sort of targeted that adult, po you know, the parent population out there to, to take care of your family. Um, do you think there's an element there that we could get down to a lower level to the, the college kids and the high school kids and even younger kids to start to build this awareness about, you know, looking around instead of looking down at your phone all the time? A terrific question. And as I, we talked before we went on air, but, you know, 11 hours a day, the studies show that most adults are on their, their smartphones. So, wow. you know, how do we break away from that? And how wow. do we get that knowledge out? And certainly, you know, kind of from the bottom up and the top down. Uh, we look at Parkland as, you know, I mean, it was a colossal failure from the top down and the bottom up. But we need to mm. learn our lesson. We need to be out front. And that, in that scenario, the students now have become really active yeah. and engaged in the process of, you know, getting the information out. But let's take it a step further and let's have, you know, uh, community meetings and, and let's have a grassroots, camp, a grassroots campaign in terms of education uh, and awareness. You've mentioned middle schools and high schools and universities. And, you know, we talk about the book. It's breaking it, broken down into eight chapters. It's very easy to read. It's not your typical security practitioner's guide. It's written for moms and dads and families on knowing what to do when faced with challenges in almost every single vertical that we're seeing on a daily basis. So the education is, is very important. And, you know, certainly professional sports does an amazing job, but they have access, Andrew. They have access to DHS and FBI mm -hmm. and the Joint Terrorism Task Force. I'm concerned about the mid-sized venues, the symphonies, the festivals, the carnivals, you know, the high school football games, where maybe those folks don't have the kind of resources that we would see on a professional level. Yeah, and even like, you know, we had the movie the movie theater event in Aurora, right? You know, of a fairly basically a fairly small okay. venue, you know, with with a massive problem. So, there's a we're, we're going to step through I think some of those scenarios in uh, part 2 of our of our show today. Um, we're getting kind of close to the break, so why don't we do that now? We'll go ahead and cut to a 1 minute break. Uh, we'll be back in just a minute with James DeMeo and we'll talk about what's your plan. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king, come banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war, you can talk to God, go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock, you can move a mountain, you can break rocks, you can be a master, don't wait for luck, dedicate yourself and you can find yourself. Do you want to be cool like me? If so, watch my show on Tuesdays at 1, called Out of the Comfort Zone. I sang this song to you because I think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool. And I want you to come watch my show, where I bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier, happier, build better relationships, and make your life a success. So come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you there. Hey, welcome back to Security Matters Hawaii. We're with James DeMail today, and we're talking about what's your plan. And we're really, what we're really trying to do is get parents to take a look at the places that you go with your family, the, the public places that you go with your family, and what, kid, what are the kind of things that you should be aware of, that you should be discussing with your family. And uh, James DeMail, the author, is with us today. He's taken the opportunity to write a really handy guide, sort of step-by-step -step walk you through the things that you should think about. And James, thank you so much for being here. Um, I wanted to kind of go ahead and go through each chapter. I know you're, you're a specialist in large events, and that was chapter one. Let's, let's kind of start there and then work our way through. Um, I think there's eight chapters total in there. Absolutely. Certainly, uh, you know, sports and entertainment is the lane I've been running in uh, for a few years now. but. You know, on the weekends, we go out to events, and what can we do, again, to kind of be aware of what, what we're doing when we go into those spaces? And certainly after Las Vegas, uh, you know, all the rules of the game for sports security have changed. Who would have wow. thought 32 floors up into a confined space, you know, which pretty much flew into a entertainment zone? We're seeing now, you know, those densely populated areas. So some things to keep in mind, Andrew, and the folks as, and the viewers, as they go into those spaces, you know, know where you park, park your vehicle, mm -hmm. fully charged cell phone, you know, know the gate that you entered, the clothing description for your eight-year-old son or daughter, just little things that you want to be aware of, a flashlight in your car. You know, if you have to leave, you know that, uh, you know how you're going to get out. And we talk about, 
you know, the people that take the tickets as you're entering the venue, that they're trained on, you know, how to lead people to safety during times of crisis. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a, a brief overview of the importance of, you know, everyone being on the same page, uh, you know, for stadiums, venues, and arenas in the United States. Yeah, and it's easy to get separated from your family. It doesn't take a an active shooter like that. It could have, the lights could go out, like what happened to you in Durham. There could be a, a, a even just a minor earthquake could cause panic and people separate. So that that meeting place, you know, where to go after, you know, uh, you know, if one, if something happens and we get separated, wait, you know, two minutes and then go to a safe uh, a meeting area. I think that's so critical. And I mean. Uh, I'm just going to take a guess. I bet nine out of ten families don't do that, except when they go to Disneyland. You know, you may be right, but hopefully after our conversation, <laughs> most people are going to remember the tips, right? So that, that's one of the essential tips is, well, two tips, right? Have the conversation and have a permanent meeting place. So if they get those two things out of this conversation, we're definitely headed in the right direction in terms of increasing, you know, their education and awareness. So it's a great point that you make, and that's something that I really try to get out there. I always talk about, you know, following law enforcement's direction and lead, mm -hmm. you know, once they get on the scene. But before they get there, you've already had that conversation. You've already picked out that meeting place, and you're going to head in that direction uh, in, in the event you become separated at the venue. Yeah, and I was thinking you might even, whoever has a phone should all have a picture of the family, the way, whatever they're wearing. So it's, because you, you know how when you get, you might get confused, oh, did she have on a blue sweater or a purple sweater? You may not be able to remember when you're under duress. So if you've got family members with phones, everybody take a picture of the Howard Bunn's dress so you can describe them to someone else who's looking for them, perhaps. There's always a, there, we have all these tools, you know, and it's, it's not just Twitter on there. <laughs> And the beauty of that, and I was an investigator in law enforcement, everything's time stamped. So if you go out and take a photo of your family and law enforcement is looking for your eight-year-old, you know, uh, missing son or daughter, well, 10 minutes ago on your phone, you took a, a picture of your son and now that's a time stamp. Yeah. That is an investigative tool for law enforcement or venue security to assist you in helping you find your missing child, if that's the case. Yeah, and so there's our, we have... We have like Aloha Stadium events here for football, and then we have the, the Honolulu Marathons, a really large event that occurs here. There are, uh, we have Ironman over on the Big Island, so there are some large events here that it's easy to get, then they're, they're spread over long distances, so it's easy to get separated. I think it's just really great advice. Um, I, let's talk about the malls, because you know, that has, that's what's incited this for you, and there's a, a huge mall here, Ala Moana, full of a lot of tourists, probably 20 different languages being spoken there. Um, I don't, I, I don't actually know, I don't do the security for that mall, and I don't know how many people they get lost down there on a daily basis, but I can imagine just language becomes a barrier, you know, if the families haven't talked about where to go back or where to meet. Um, so tell us a little bit about the, the mall advice that you have, because everybody goes to the malls with their families. Well, absolutely. We know it's a soft target. For the most part, you're mm -hmm. probably not going through any type of, you know, screening measures. And we have, you know, Thanksgiving coming up. Yeah. So we have Black Friday. We have the holiday season. So we're going to be out. We're going to be shopping with our families. But when we go into these mall areas, we usually have some type of contracted uh, security. We may have law enforcement. We may have, you know, guest services. But we have resources. We have facilities and housekeeping. We have people that are inside that space that we can utilize as resources. And I always talk about taking a look at, you know, the apps for the malls and, and you know, finding out what time they open, finding out what time they close, mm. taking a look at your weather, uh, your weather app oh, as you go out to the mall. If you're dealing with the potential of inclement or severe weather uh, in your area, whether it's Hawaii or you know, obviously I'm in New York right now, but I, I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. But taking a few minutes to, you know, find out that information before you head out to the mall. If the lights go out in the mall, which is what happened to us, you've already had the conversation, you've picked out your, your specially uh, designated meeting spot, and you're going to go to that area. And again, I remind everyone, if there is a, an active shooter or workplace violence or bomb scare or some type of IED or some type of unthinkable situation, always follow law enforcement lead. Uh, but, you know, we talk about the stats, and you know, I wrote the book a year ago, and in 14 minutes, most of the bad stuff is over before the good guys get there. Mm. The, the beauty of this project, Andrew, is we're talking about changing that reactionary mindset to one that's more proactive in nature. So if we, and that's part of filling a gap in the force continuum, that's before the point of contact, up to the point of contact, and prior to law enforcement arriving on scene. Having these tools and getting out in front, again, places you in the best position possible. Yeah, and I have... Um... I've come across folks that uh, even even run, hide, fight. If you watch that video, when those folks are egressing out that back door, 
Um, you know, the, there's like four or five of them, and they go to get one guy from in front of the building. I kind of felt like I, I was taught to egress until I come across law enforcement. So I kind of thought that, that that video didn't sell egress quite a, a, as well as it should have. You know, to continue away, you know, don't don't have a phone in your hands, right? Make sure your hands are empty, um, you know, if, if you're waving them around. And, you know, egress until you come across a, authorities, you know? Absolutely. And again, we always talk about choke points and bottlenecks. So if yeah. everyone is going out the same exit door, we have the potential of a choke point or a bottleneck. And that's where a terrorist is going to look to strike is those tight areas, those tight spaces. Unfortunately, we saw that in Thousand Oaks where there wasn't too many ways out of that venue. Mm. We saw that in the Pulse. We have limited egress, limited ways to get out. But if you know in advance where the exits are, give yourself a few options uh, in the event something happens. Um, certainly from a terrorist standpoint or someone who's disenfranchised, they're going to look for those exit points uh, inside those spaces. So you want to be out in front in terms of your pre-planned response. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully when they come in one, you're going out the other. Um, exactly. So let's let's look at the um, uh, let's look at the schools. So Hawaii has a real problem with uh, this open campus environment. So um, you know we don't have the vertical school buildings like you build on the mainland. You know typically, so a lot of our campuses are really wide open. And you know schools have obviously been a target. I mean that's the thing that I think tugs at everyone's heartstrings uh, for the students. You know I've been this. My voice is always the one. You know if we make them go there. We need to make sure that they're safe. You know, we owe them that protection. Um, and uh, maybe the college campuses are a little bit different because they're chosen, but they've also been targeted. Um, what do you What do you think we can do with students? I think education there has gotten better. You know, in those spaces, and I don't know if it's trickled down. You know, to, to Parkland and down to the the, the uh, K through twelve yet quite as much. Uh, but what's your take on, on what we should do there, and what should parents be looking for when they're touring a campus or their their child's going to be going there? Uh, what kind of advice can you give them there? Well, you know, I would do the same thing because I'm a, a parent of two children and husband, you know, wife, family. Uh, you know, I send my children out to the same world that the viewers send their children out to. So I'm just, I have a vested interest just like each and every one does that's watching today. You know, get involved. You know, talk to your principals. Talk to your director of securities. Talk to your school resource officers. Let them know. I and mean, one of the first things I did when we relocated to North Carolina, I went up to the SRO and said, hi, I'm James DeMay. I'm retired law enforcement. And here's my son, Nate. It's no different from any parent. Go up and say hi, face to a name, make that connection, get involved in the process. School board meetings. If you're paying taxes, then obviously get involved in the process. But certainly, I work with, you know. So I'm losing, losing. Hold on, I'm losing a little bit of audio. Yes, you know, in terms of hardening targets okay. and, and, you know, vestibules and, you know, obviously it's really, really important that the, the students have a vested interest. If one of their classmates is having a bad day, yeah. it's incumbent upon them to let the SRO or the principal or, you know, a fellow student or someone just don't presume it's somebody else's uh, responsibility. Because, again, growing up nowadays is tough. There's a lot of peer pressure. Kids don't want to come forward, but certainly after Parkland, We've seen that mindset change where the kids want to come forward and share that information, which again, you know, it's it's to their credit. Yeah, I uh, I I think I'm, I'm kind of ashamed it took those students to bring that voice out as loudly as they did. But I, I think other students paid attention to it, and hopefully that gets them, you know, hungry for this information. Um, what about uh, let's let's talk a little bit. We talk, I think um, I, I think movie theaters was in there. I'm not sure if you had that included in, in smaller venues. Well, obviously we had a, a terrible event at Aurora, and um, you know that was you know perhaps preventable. I mean you know the guy opened the back door, you know went in, then left, then propped it open, came back in the back door, uh, that kind of stuff. I remember as a kid, I'll admit we always tried to sneak in the back door of the movie theater because it was always unlocked. Uh, but we used to always get caught and they'd run us out anyway and make us pay. So I don't know I don't know what your experience was with that, but. Um, you know, that's a, another place that it's dark, you're seated, you're, you're quite a bit of a target, you know, so, and do you know where the exits are in a movie theater? Is it only the way that you came in, you know, perhaps? So maybe that's a place you need to go look around. Do you have some advice for, uh, for those types of venues? Sure, it's a, it's a great question, and, and again, you know, Black Friday, holiday season, mm. but some of these movie theaters are, right, are physically inside, you know, shopping malls. Oh, that's right. So that they're not standalone, in some cases they are, but get out to the theater early, you know, order your tickets online early, get out to your seat, 
you know, when the lights are still on inside the theater, look around, see where the exit signs are. If someone's looking a little out of the ordinary or possibly having a bad day, go tell an attendant, go speak to the manager, let somebody know within that space. Don't just, again, as I mentioned earlier, don't presume it's somebody else's responsibility. You know, if, if you see people sneaking in the side door, let somebody know about it. You, you know, you paid for your ticket. Um, you know, certainly if people are trying to get in, they may be coming in for unscrupulous reasons. You know, so we want to be mindful of that. So, again, you know, just take a look at the entire space. Look at it from multiple angles. Try not to have tunnel vision. You know, pay attention to the area that you're in and share that information with somebody in a position of authority in a timely manner. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really good advice. So do you – let me ask you a question. Do you try to try to park yourself – you know, nearer to an exit if you, if you have a choice. Uh, you know, in a theater, I like to sit in the middle, you know, center of the screen, and that's going to be probably the, one of the hardest places to get away from. Um, so what, what, do you have a tie, or do you, do you poll the family and say, all right, what do you guys think? Is it safe enough we can sit in the middle? Well, I mean, with 28 years in the industry, I'm always looking to sit near the exit. That's, just how, <laughs> that's how I'm trained. Or if I'm in a restaurant, you know, I can kind of see who's coming in the door. Sure. That's just my training. But, I mean, obviously, if it's a best-selling movie uh, and the theater's packed, you have to kind of sit where your seat is. But you've already figured out a way on how to get out. Or you've already, you know, you know who the key people are that you can go to, you know, if you need their help. But certainly just know how to get in, how to get out. You know, fully charged cell phone. Share the information. Look around. Try not to have tunnel vision, but certainly just have that mindset that if something really tragic happens, you're already prepared to react, uh, you know, if you're faced with that kind of scenario. That is great advice, James. The, the work you put in this book is, I, I think it's going to pay huge dividends. Uh, I really appreciate, appreciate you traveling the country and, and sharing it with everyone. I'm glad you're going to be up at ISC East uh, this coming week. Uh, hopefully we can get you out at ISC West in the spring. Uh, and then I, I saw that you were speaking at some Rotary Clubs. I know there's a lot of other groups that I believe can benefit from this. Um, you can count on me to do my share out here on spreading the same word and spreading this book. Again, folks, it's about three bucks on Kindle. Get out there and buy it. Um, James, uh, last comment, and then we're going to close. Okay, take care. Aloha. Hey, you guys, thanks. This has been uh, Security Matters Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii studio. Uh, and James DeMayo has been with us talking about what's your plan because security matters. Thank you. Good job, James. That's going to play really well, man. Oh. Yeah, he thought he was out. Yeah, so he'll be in a room tomorrow in front of, I don't even know what I see, he's probably 500 at least.